What's up guys, how's it going? I'm in a uh, gas station parking lot and I thought, what better time to make a video? So here we are. Um, basically today, I read a Twitter thread the other day that really just fucking drove me up the wall. And talk about getting cancelled. This is, this is the subject where if you say anything contrary to the um, exact black and white law with no exceptions or considering the circumstances, People label you all sorts of shit, and uh, people, you know, immediately canceled. You fucking freak! How could you say that? But um, I hate that, and I gotta say something about this. So let me just—I'm not gonna say who this person is on Twitter. Um, please don't go looking for them. I'm gonna change the names in this. But um, here we go. I read this once yesterday, and it really, like, it physically hurt me the more I read it, so, uh, and I, I've kind of forgotten exactly how it goes, so I want to keep it as fresh as possible, but here we go. Here's the tweet. Okay, so I'm finally going to speak up about this because I'm fed up. I dated Madison when I was 15, and she was 18. We met through Twitter, and quickly started flirting. She was one of the first people I had met in, uh, this city, because I lived in another city at the time. <laughs> We started flirting extremely fast, and I was manipulated. I was only 15. She was always telling me that I was very mature for my age, and I didn't realize until later on that I was being groomed. I remember one night, we were going to go to drink at a friend's house, and I planned on staying at Madison's afterwards. Before we met up, uh, she texted me something along the lines of, If my mom asks, say you're my little brother's friend. I didn't realize how fucking creepy all of this was at the time. We had an open relationship, but it felt really one-sided. I couldn't hook up with anyone, but she could. We broke up after two months of dating. After that, I was hooking up with her best friend, who was 20 at the time. <laughs> okay, get that last part. After that, after we broke up two months of dating, I was hooking up with her best friend, who was 20 at the time. So already this guy's a fucking piece of shit. Okay? Uh, moving on. One of the worst nights of my life was at a little party, and Madison was there. This was shortly after we broke up. I got too drunk, and a bunch of us were all making out on this bed. Dude, how do you get yourself in these fucking situations? I'd never gotten a situation like that in high school. And to this day, after Madison left, she texted me and said, Please don't hook up with anyone. <laughs> okay, who the fuck cares? Oh, man. I broke down and got really emotional. I felt like she still had control over my life after we broke up. This dude's a fucking pussy. I hate this guy so much. When I met Madison, I also met a lot of new people who were her friends, and I quickly became friends with all of them. After we broke up, Madison didn't want to go to uh, the city anymore or hang out with any of my friends because they were her friends first. It, it, it's kind of... I've never been in a relationship and like hung out exclusively with my partner's friends. I don't know if any of you guys have done that. Um, anyway, I unfortunately forgave her for everything a couple months after. About a year after we broke up, when I was 16, I ended up going to her house because she was hosting a little party. So he willingly went to her house because she was hosting a party after all of this, which apparently he fucking hated and thought he was a victim. She was very much, she very much wanted me to stay the night, and I did. Again, your fucking choice, douchebag. She wanted me to sleep with her in her room, and I did. Again, your fucking choice, douchebag. We ended up hooking up, and I immediately felt so fucking gross afterwards. That was probably the last time I ever talked to her. I'm saying all this because I'm tired of seeing them around. It makes me extremely uncomfortable. And I know a lot of people know about this because our relationship wasn't a fucking secret at all. All of you chose to block it out. Okay. Who the fuck cares? What, what's, what's, what, are we, what, are, what is everyone supposed to do? Hold Madison and he ats her Twitter accountable. Hold your fucking friend accountable. This shit is ridiculous. If you still kick it with her after reading this, you're dead to me. Okay, I'll try to make this short. Here's my thinking. Don't you think it's a little counterproductive to treat a kid, like a 15-year-old kid, like the dumbest, most incapable piece of shit who can do no wrong because he's too fucking stupid to think for himself, and then immediately, the minute he turns 18, you treat him like this self-sufficient, wise adult who's been around the block and should, should know better. I never understood that. If you don't see the fucking issue in that, I don't know how to help you. <laughs> People treat legal age like the most literal thing in the fucking world. And they never look at the context. They never look at the context. 
You could be, let's say, a 17-year-old dating someone going on 20. And people are like, ooh, yikes. That's a little problematic. And then, okay, so what about... I know there's some country somewhere where the legal age is, like, 17. It's somewhere lower than lower than 18, right? So, what about that? If it happens in that country, then it's fine, no big deal. Everything, everything has changed. For the record, I think 18 is a good ballpark age for this kind of thing. I don't think it's bad. But I also think the situation matters. Let's take a look at these ages, 15 and 18. That means they could potentially be in high school together. They could have gone to the same school at the same time. One's a sophomore, one's a senior. That kind of stuff happened all the time when I was in high school. It wasn't the best, and even more so, a lot of seniors went after freshmen, which I thought was low in multiple ways. I don't mean the number, I just mean like the act of doing that. It's kind of like, come on, man. Even at the time, I thought that. But the fact, I didn't even, I couldn't bear to look at the responses because I was gonna, I was so afraid everyone was gonna be like, oh, thank you for, for you're so brave for telling us the story, for coming out with, with this tragic story. I hope everything's, you know, going better for you. And I hope, yeah, I know the pain will never go away. All that fucking bullshit. It just goes to show that people will ruin someone's fucking life the minute they see they can like get away with it socially. If they think, ah, yeah, this this is the the socially acceptable standard has been altered a little bit here. It's not exactly normalcy, so I can fucking destroy this person because everyone's gonna be, ooh, yikes, problematic. They would immediately go for it. No sympathy for the other side. This guy willingly got into the situation multiple times. When I, okay, when I was 15, how should I put this? When I was 20, I didn't feel any different than when I was 15. In fact, when I was 15, I was reading like Road to Serfdom, Malcolm Gladwell, and I was really into politics and like microbiology and shit. And then when I was 20, I was working in a movie theater. I'd come home and watch Batman Beyond and eat ice cream and play video games and jerk off and go to bed. <laughs> so it's like, Oh, dude, the, the fact that we treat a 17-year-old like a fucking idiot, like a, like a pet that needs to be fed, put to bed, and can't think for themselves, and then the second they turn 18, they're like this 50-year-old potential creep. It's, it's beyond inhuman. That's, that's the evil um, that I see in this situation. I don't know about you guys, but fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. Holy shit. Anyway, see ya.